Welcome to week one, video two of the SAS Bootcamp. In this video, we are going to learn to do something, some of the basic steps in SAS. So the first thing we'll learn today is how to open a data set and view it within SAS. Now I'm going to show, begin to show you guys this on the SAS software within my computer, and then we'll make the switch over to SAS Studio. I'm going to do that a couple more times today, but uh, soon we will work almost exclusively within SAS Studio, and I'm not going to show you this interface much. But I do want to begin with this interface because I think it helps us understand a little easier. Uh, if you want to open a data set in SAS, first you have to have a SAS data set. Here on my folder, I have a data set called PSYC, PSYCH site. This is a SAS data set. Uh, I know because that icon says it's a SAS data set. And when I click on the properties, it tells me that it is a SAS system data set. Now the suffix, the, the extension for a SAS data set is SAS. 7D that that is another thing you can use to identify. If you already have a file like this on your computer, which I'm going to provide you with these files, you can simply double click on this file and it should automatically open this file for you in your SAS window. Now you see that it has opened up this SAS uh, file has this name called site. You can see it says view table tmp1.site. We'll talk about what that tmp1 is in just a little second. Uh, but this is the site uh, data set. You'll see that it has one, two, three, four, five, six columns. It has patient ID on the left, the sex of the individual. It has an information on whether they have a depression or not, and a few other variables that we don't have to go over right now. You can scroll at the right side of this data set, and you can scroll on the bottom if there were multiple columns which go beyond the screen, which in this case there are not. One thing you will quickly realize in SAS is SAS is not like Excel. You can't click on something and change something. If I type into the into my keyboard, it's not going to change anything because SAS data sets here are view only. You can view them, you can read them, you cannot edit manually. You have to write code to make any changes whatsoever. And that might seem daunting at first, but it's actually comforting to me in a way because I know that I can't accidentally make a change to a research data set that I've collected and all of a sudden change my results by accident. I know that every single change that I need to make with this data set has to be written and recorded in a SAS program. Now, there are different, as, long, as we're talking about opening data sets, there are different ways to open data sets beyond just double clicking it on your given folder. There are ways to open data sets within the SAS environment without having to switch back to your Windows Explorer. To learn how to do this, I'm going to show you guys how to write your first SAS statement. The first statement I want to show you is how to write a libname statement. A libname is the name of a library. It is basically a way to tell SAS where to look for on your computer to find the files that you need to find. The way you write a libname statement is you write L-I-B-N-A-M-E. -E. That's your command to SAS. Then now it knows that you need to, you're going to write something that's going to assign a name to the library. And then it's, you're going to tell SAS where your files are located. So I'm going to call that my like name right now is data because that's where I keep my data. You can call it anything you want as long as it is under eight characteristics and it doesn't begin with a number and it doesn't have spaces. So you're not allowed to have spaces. You can have underscores, however, and it has to be within eight characters. Now, next, you need to tell SAS where this folder is located. And this is where the, this is the file that I want to refer to, the psych file. But in order to get there, I'm going to have to click here, copy this address within my folder structure. And then type and then paste that information in within single or double quotes. Be the one you use. SAS knows that this is the uh, folder path that it needs to look under. And as usual, when you conclude a sentence and statement in SAS, you need to end with semicolon. So there's my semicolon. This is your first SAS statement. To repeat, this SAS statement basically takes this folder path and assigns it a name called data. So next time you want to say, look for the site file within this folder. You don't have to say this whole thing every single time. You can instead just say it's in the data library. And it knows, SAS knows where the data library is located. So it will directly look within that library to find the file you want. So let's go ahead and execute this file. I'm going to select it. And I'm going to hit the little running man button right here. Uh, and if I close this SAS window and I can close it, you can see this library behind it. And this library tells you that uh, libref data, which is library reference data, the first, the same physical library as TMP1, libref data was successfully assigned as follows. Ignore that first one. I think it's related to what we did earlier. Uh, libref data was successfully assigned as follows. 
and this is the path that it shows which is the path that we entered now in order to go to this library within the sas environment move over to your left side double click on the libraries uh, icon within the sas environment and then open the data library the data library is the library we just created right now this library did not exist before when i double click this library i see one file it's called site now within my actual folder structure the library that we are referring to actually has several other files but only one of these is a data set so the sas environment only shows you the data set so if i navigate to that data library that i just created i can actually open the site data set and it shows me the exact same file now opened within the sas environment Let's look at how to do this exact same process in SAS Studio, and then we can talk about um, how to actually explore these data sets a little more. I'm going to switch over to SAS Studio now. Um, in SAS Studio, what I'm opening on the left side here is the Server Files and Folders tab. This is similar to my own folder on my PC, and you'll see I have a Week One folder which actually has the same data set site. I can double click that folder, and you will see that SAS gives me the same folder to look at the same for the same data set to look at it's got the patient id sex depression so on and so forth all the same columns as we saw earlier and you can you view it within your browser now within sas studio as well you don't have to double click on files to open them you can refer to them through lib names like we did in regular sas and i'll show you how to do that let me close this navigate to my program and i'm going to write a lib name statement just like I did on my computer's version of SAS. I'm gonna call it lib name data. And then I'm gonna type my quotes. Within my quotes, I need to mention the folder path. Now, I don't know the folder path within SAS Studio, so I'm gonna click on week one, which is the folder within which my file is located. I'm gonna right click, click on properties, and SAS shows me the folder path. So I'm just gonna copy this right here. Copy close and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to conclude my statement with a semicolon. To execute this, I'm going to select the statement with the little running man button and the log tells me that lib name data was libref data was successfully assigned as follows. Now, in order to go to this library, similar to how we did in the regular SAS, I'm going to close my server files tab and I'm, I'm going to move over to the libraries tab on the left side. This is similar to the libraries we saw earlier. And within the libraries, in the dropdown, you'll see all of these pre-existing libraries that SAS already provides to you by default. This data library is the one that is not provided by default, and that's the one I just created. So if I double click on the data, I'll see it has the same psych file we saw earlier within this tab right there. So if I double click on this one, you'll see there's your file. Now you might be wondering, why are we looking at two different ways to show this? If you can open a data set, with from directly from your folder, why not just do that? Why do we have to write these library names, assign these names to these libraries, and then refer to files? Well, for one, every time SAS opens a data set, SAS automatically assigns a library to it. Every time. If you open, when, I, when I go back to SAS, let me show you guys this. When I go back to SAS, and when I use my folder to double click on a file name to open, to open a data set, it automatically assigns it to a temporary library that it usually calls TMP1, TMP2, or so on and so forth. This table name shows you what the data sets library is located. So, so this right now is TMP2 because I clicked on this data set from my folder. Now, if I instead click on it from my library within the SAS environment, it will say that the name of the file is data.psych. So it's a little cleaner, to be able to use the data sets and open them from within SAS because then you can see where this library is coming from instead of these temporary libraries that SAS keeps assigning to them. Uh, in addition, as you start writing code and you need to reference data sets, libraries, library names like data that we just created are much more useful because they help you understand exactly um, how to go about opening this. So let me show you guys an example of how to do this. And for this purpose, I'm going to go over into our SAS Studio and we'll start working there. The next thing I want to show you guys is after I'm done doing the log, I'm going to go back to the code tab here. The, the next thing I want to show you guys is your second SAS program. And for this program, what I want to show is how to explore a data set. Let's say you've got a data set and you don't know what's in there and you want to understand how many variables it has, 
how many rows it has, and just some basic information about what's in your data set. The easiest way to do this is to use something called the PROC contents procedure. In order to write PROC contents, you will write PROC contents. You'll see that SAS Studio actually is really comfortable and convenient for learning in that it provides this drop down boxes when you type. This feature is not, not actually available on regular SAS. But as you're beginning to learn, you might find that these drop down boxes are actually pretty helpful, especially when you don't know the syntax and need to pick something up. For now, I'm just going to use PROC contents. The next step here is data, where you tell SAS you need, you are going to run a procedure called a contents procedure. And this contents procedure has to be run on a pre existing data set. And the data set that I wanted to refer to is the psych data set. But I can't just write the word psych because SAS needs to know where the psych data set is located. Now, I could type this whole folder path that we had typed earlier right here, but it's easier to just tell SAS that the site data set is in, is in the library called data that we created earlier. In order to refer to this, I will type data period psych. And I will conclude my statement with a semicolon. What this is saying is, is that we are trying to run this contents procedure on this data set called psych. This notation for a file name is very commonly used in SAS and you need to get used to this notation as quickly as you can. This notation basically is library name period file name and it is used whenever you want to refer to any data set in SAS. Now the prop contents procedure is we've actually not finished writing it. We've written the first statement in it but in order to complete your prop contents procedure you need to write a run statement with a semicolon. Many SAS procedures actually finish with run. There are some that finish with quit. We'll go over those later but for now this prop contents ends with a run. The run followed by a semicolon tells SAS that the prop contents Procedure is now complete. Now, if you want to run this, you will select this, these two statements, hit the little running man button, and you will see here SAS switched over from my code tab to my log tab to my results tab. So let me go back to my code, make sure the code worked well. Uh, you'll see it, it has duplicated the sentence that we have here, which means it read the code correctly. Um, and then it tells me that there are some notes here in blue. You don't have to understand everything that it says right there. What you are looking for here is if there are any errors or warnings. If there are any errors, it will show here under the red, uh, red cross symbol. And if there is a warning, which means there might be something wrong, but SAS just wants to let you know that something is going on, it will give you a little exclamation point in that triangle there. Uh, we see that for our PROC contents procedure, there are no errors. There are notes, which means it ran well and it's successfully executed. So you can switch over to the results tab and you can see the contents procedures output. The output tells you what is the name of the data set, how many observations are within it, how many variables are within it, what is the length of the observations, uh, are your data sets compressed or not, when was it created, uh, what software, so on and so forth. And it also gives you a list of the variable names. I'm not going to go over everything, but this is a good way for you to understand how to look at you, how to look at output and how to explore a data set within the SAS environment. That concludes this video. I'm going to pick up on the next video shortly.